ADJ Tech Tools, very recently I posted a really interesting mix of me performing with this exact setup on Facebook. You can watch that in the link below. I got a lot of comments asking me how I set up the mixer. Because this mixer is an analog mixer, it requires a sound card. So that means a lot of channels coming in. It also has all these sends and returns. So how do I set up the Zone 92 or mixers like it with a sound card and guitar pedals? I'll show you in the video today. Watch and enjoy. First, the basics. We've got the Allen & Heath Zone 92 mixer here, which is a really interesting mixer in the pantheon of DJ stuff. Uh, Allen & Heath has got a great pedigree as live sound mixers. So not only are their mixers really high quality, but they have some stuff in them that you might find more in front of the stage of a rock band instead of necessarily a DJ. For example, and the one big thing about this particular mixer are these auxiliary sends and returns. What that means is if we get a little, let's say a clap going, Let's take the delay off. If we want to put some reverb on it. We can do that by sending little bits of this channel to anything external. So that's a send, and here is the return. So we've got two different dedicated sends on this mixer, and here's how I've got them set up. I've got auxiliary two running out of a stereo output because this is a stereo guitar pedal. It's got two inputs. So I've got two outputs running directly into two inputs of the digital reverb. I've got the reverb all the way up to max. And then I've got two outputs running back into the mixer on auxiliary return number two. This allows me to define how much signal I want to send to the reverb, a little bit or a lot, and how much of the returning signal I want to mix in. You can even do this pre-fader. So if the fader's all the way down, I'm not hearing any of the dry signal, I can just hear the reverb path. And because of that, it makes it possible to mix mono and stereo effects. For example, I've got the digital delay here, the DD3. This is a, a totally mono effect. Um, it's typically used for guitars, but can be really interesting for things like claps. So because I'm not directly affecting or in line with this um, with the sound source, I don't need it to be in stereo. I can send a little bit of it in mono and it mixes on top of the stereo signal and I don't affect it. So let's hear what that sounds like. Again, in this case, I've got one cable now running out of auxiliary one. Now, you could use a stereo Y cable, which would sum the two lefts and rights into a single input. This would send the full track to your guitar pedal. In this case, I'm only getting the left signal, which is not ideal, but there's a lot of information there and it'll probably work. In the case of the return path, I have a single cable going out of the digital delay into the left return, which is mono. So that puts that signal then into the stereo field, but rather than being actual stereo, it's just a whole bunch of mono stuff on left and on right. And let's hear what that sounds like. Now, the nice thing about this Zone 92 is that I can EQ that return channel. So in this case, I only have the highs. Let's get a little more low information. Like, let's say we had a little That's really only the low. Let's hear just that send. A lot of low information there. And here's the high stuff. 
And now the cool thing about these sends is you can do little quick sends of specific sounds. So let's say we had a hi-hat going to, and I only wanted to get little bits of that um, snare, or rather that clap, into the signal. And let's get some music so we have something interesting going on here. Why don't we get this guy going? So that's kind of cool because I can just sort of send the snare to the reverb while the rest of the drums play through. So if you got only, it's great if you have a drum machine or some sort of alternative source where a very dry snare can be affected. But if you've got a full song playing like this track, we can do the same thing. So you get the idea. That's how the sends and returns work on the Allen Heat Zone 92. And the reason why this mixer is so popular amongst a lot of house and techno DJs is because it's one of the only mixers in the world that has this kind of functionality that normally DJs don't really care about, but front of house or, or live sound mixers care a lot about. The other thing that's really great and why the routing gets a little complicated with this mixer, however, is that it's a true analog mixer. All the summing is done in the analog domain, which means if you're mixing a whole bunch of stuff, which I truly am here. Let's get this going. So we've got a kick. We've got some claps going here. Let's get this sample back in. And now let's bring in even a four track. So this is a lot of information. And if I was playing on a digital mixer, there's a good chance that I would be distorting the mixer because there's a ton of volume and there's only so much headroom. Each one of these things alone is probably gonna be meeting the headroom of the mixer. So if you're playing on an analog mixer, it allows you to distort and compress a little bit more softly um, without harsh digital distortion. But it means that you have to bring a sound card with a whole bunch of outputs. And that's the secret here uh, for both this mixers and other mixers. You need to find yourself a sound card this sound card is the bomb. The RME Fireface UCX is a uh, USB or also a Firewire sound card that just sounds great. It's got low latency, really loud outputs, great converters, man, it's the bomb. It's also super expensive at like 1500, 1600 bucks, which probably is a bit more than you want to invest in a sound card. Um, so lower cost, multi uh, output sound cards also work great. For example, the NI series, the Audio 6 is really great. Um, what you're gonna be looking for is a minimum of three stereo outputs. This sound card has three on the back. I'm using all three that are routed into the mixer. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six. That's left, right, left, right, left, right. Now, those are all running straight into the mixer. So I've got three decks, left, right, one, two, three, four, five, six, left, right, left, right, left, right. This sound card also has some additional outputs on the front. I could use the headphones to get that fourth channel, but I'm actually going into the fourth channel with my TR8, going straight out of the TR8 into the fourth channel and mixing the TR8 with three different songs from Tractor, leaving the fourth deck kind of empty for right now. Then, so I can record my setup, I'm using the, the last pair of cables that came in this multi-core cable. Typically multi-core cables like this one where they have a whole bundle that then wrap up into one core to keep everything nice and neat, have eight or 16, 
which means you've got four channels of left and right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I'm using seven and eight going out of the record output back into my sound card, and then I've got that set up to record in Tractor. While we're in Tractor, let's go ahead and look at the settings for the sound card. I've got my output routing set up to external, and here you see the digital explanation of what I was just talking about. I've got analog one and two for deck A, three and four for deck B, five and six for deck C, so A, B, C, one, two, three, four, five, six, nothing for deck D, and then on input routing, I've got instrument line, and if we turn up a signal, we'll see that popping and we can see that anything I mix into this signal comes back into Tractor and then allows me, if we go to Mix Recorder, to record from an external source into Deck A. That was that input right there, Deck A. A little tricky, you just have to do this once and then we'll see levels bouncing and I can record my mixes. So I've got three channels coming out of the sound card into the Allen and Heath, and then a single channel coming back, single stereo pair rather, coming back into the sound card to record it all together. That pretty much sums up um, the analog routing or all the cabling of the Zone 92. Again, why you would want to use a mixer like this is for the analog summing, which is great if you're mixing a lot of channels. If you're just doing, you know, one track into two tracks, a little bit of blending in between, any mixer on the market's going to work. There's plenty of headroom to handle that um, as long as you're respecting your levels. You know, I could probably also bring my gains all the way down and, and create a lot of headroom. But I kind of like how these different channels start to interact with each other when I really make things loud. You know, especially with this TR8's kicks, you know, really make them start to punch through. Or these big snare builds. And then I've got those sends. I just know that I've got a lot of room to play and a lot of dimensions um, to push without distorting, which is some of the problems I've had with the digital mixers where you plug in your USB and all of these channels from Tractor show up right on the mixer and then you mix in the mis mixer digitally. It's great for convenience. I mean, man, just showing up to the club and having one USB that you plug in is, is killer um, or at home, you know, wherever. So this kind of a setup clearly takes a little bit more work. There's a lot more cables, but I think you'll find that if you take the time to do it, it'll pay some interesting dividends um, and can be well worth the investment. I hope this was super helpful for you. If you wanna watch me in action using this setup live, just follow the link underneath me. For more tips, tricks, reviews, and so much more, just like this video, I hope you'll join me on the web at djtechtools.com.